this episode, I am going to be discussing surgery in a general sense, and I'm going to be mentioning gender dysphoria, um, blood, and, oh, there was something else, what is it? Oh yeah, and death, that's important, I'll be discussing, mentioning, mentioning death. I feel like I should say I'm not a medical professional, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a person who is personally experiencing a lot of these things, so yeah, just take it with a grain of salt, just a, a big giant grain of salt, which wouldn't be a grain, take it with a, a boulder of salt, there we go. Some of you have been 
putting your real names, your real information in the reviews, and just to let you know that can be really dangerous. And I would really, really discourage you from putting your real name, your real location, your birthday, you know, anything sensitive like that on the public internet. And, you know, it's at the end of the day, you can do what you want, but I just really, really strongly uh, discourage that. And I will not be reading any personal information if I do another reading reviews uh, episode, of course. Um, yeah, like, usernames on Roblox or other apps, that's fine, in my opinion. I mean, I guess the worst that could happen is you get, uh, friend requests from people that, random people on the internet that you don't know. Um, but yeah, the internet is, is very, very, very public. And unless you're sure that you're sharing information privately, just don't share it. And, you know, I, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but, um, yeah, I'm just concerned. I want all my listeners to be safe. I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone, okay? So, please take your personal information out of any reviews, if you have left it there. And as for reading reviews, as I've said in my previous reading reviews episode, as long as your review is uh, not explicit, and it's not hateful, and it's not creepy or gross, then I will read it, no matter uh, how many stars you give me. So yeah, I think it's fun to read reviews and read them on an episode and read them in ASMR. We've had some real, real interesting ones, I'll tell ya. And I realized after I did my first reading reviews episode that I only, I was only reading the United States reviews. Oh my gosh, is that a car? Oh my gosh, you see, this is, this is what I deal with. <laughs> I have to pause and I'm pretty sure that's a motor in the distance. I don't know, is it gone? I can't. Sometimes I have a hard time telling. Yeah, I think it's gone. My, sometimes I keep my volume. I listen to myself while I record it, but I keep my volume kind of low sometimes. So, well, there you have that. Where was I? Um, but yeah, long story short, I realized that I was only reading, last time I did this, uh, this reading reviews thing, I was, I was only reading the reviews from the United States, so I'm so sorry to everyone from other countries who have ever left a review, I couldn't even see a review before, and I just recently found out how to read your reviews, um, so yeah, next time, next time I do the reading reviews, I will definitely be reading all, all the reviews. I'll go back to the very beginning, and I'll find the reviews from other countries. And, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was my bad. But... That is easy to fix. So yeah, when am I going to have my surgery? My 
top surgery, my gender-affirming surgery that'll be happening July 21st, uh, 2020 for posterity. And yeah, I actually have uh, a special guest coming on to take over the podcast that week, um, the week that I'm having surgery. So you can look forward to that. Uh, an ASM artist, a new ASM artist on YouTube. So you, you'll get to meet someone you may never have heard before. So that should be fun. Or I hope. I hope it'll be fun. But yeah, there's gonna be a guest a ASM artist take over the week of July 21st. Um, I'll get my surgery and then I'll be recovering. Um, hopefully it doesn't take too long, but that's kind of up in the air right now. So I'll definitely have, you know, some episodes queued up and done beforehand so that there can still be episodes releasing while I'm recovering. And I know um, many of you might be regular listeners and you might know that I am trans or transgender, non-binary. And I use they, them pronouns. But if you're new, that's okay. You may not know that I'm trans. And I, um, I know there that I have some younger listeners, so I want to try to explain it in a way that can make sense to everyone. So... Just so you know, I was assigned a female at birth. I'm not female, but that's what I was assigned at birth. I'm non-binary. And I do have some other episodes that go more into that in detail. But, so, some people have breasts. That's just a thing. <laughs> It's just a thing, um, and a lot of trans people, um, have severe, it's called gender dysphoria, um, from the way their body does not match who they are, their mental image of themselves, you know, not that, not that every gender has to look a certain way, but people have like their mental understanding, their emotional and spiritual understanding of themselves. And when their body doesn't match that, it can be really traumatic, really traumatic um, in a lot of ways. And that is the case with me. I have gender dysphoria for my chest. And so I've I've thought about it for a long time, uh, probably, oh gosh, probably something like four, three or four years I've been thinking about, you know, just really thinking about it, trying to make the decision, do I want to have top surgery to, uh, what they do is they flatten your chest, they quote unquote masculinize your chest for lack of a better word, because, you know, masculine people can have any type of chest. It's just language fails at some, at some level. Um, but yeah, and that is, that's what that is. <laughs> so yeah, I, I did have to think and contemplate for a long time as to whether I wanted this surgery and I don't think there's any right amount of time to think about um, a gender-affirming surgery. I think it just depends on the person. 
for me, I was unsure for a long time, and I think it's okay to be unsure. And I think at the end of the day, it's between you and your doctors, you know, what's right for you. And sometimes at the end of the day, it's just between you and you, what's right for you if your doctors are not great. Because sadly, sometimes that happens. And it's okay to be unsure. Um, a lot of trans people really struggle with being unsure. And they're still trans. They're still valid. Um, but yeah, I was unsure for a long time. And I think it helped me more. Even though I have dysphoria, it actually helped me more to focus on the euphoria. The gender euphoria part. Like, imagining myself with a flat chest and just really taking the, taking the time to, like, live in that fantasy world and pay attention to how that felt for me. And then to think about, like, is it really worth getting a major surgery for me? Is it worth the cost? Is it worth the recovery? Um... Yeah, is it, is it worth so many things? Because there's so many things you have to think about. And I decided, yeah. Yeah, it is worth it for me. So, I'm really lucky to have some great doctors where I live. Um, I have um, a wonderful LGBTQ clinic where I live, and I see several doctors there. So for me, I had to get three letters, a lot of people, so to get it covered by your insurance, to get your surgery covered by your insurance, at least your top surgery, it might be different for other surgeries, um, you really only have to have two letters, unless you're me. <laughs> I had to have three letters. Um, so really what it is, is if you're on certain medications and then you need a letter from your psychiatrist and your doctors will know, they'll tell you, um, if you need two or three letters, if they're good doctors. Um, so I needed a letter from my psychiatrist, a letter from a behavioral therapist, and a letter from, uh, a doctor who's just like your general practitioner, um, which at the place where I go, we have a very specialized, like, trans-focused uh, doctor who does, who writes those letters. And uh, I think for me, seeing the behavioral therapist letter was the hardest one to get because I kept getting, like, the, there was a wait list at the place I usually go, so I tried to go to another place to get letters from behavioral therapists, and then they ended up being incompetent, and <laughs> at least I thought they were incompetent, um, and it's, it makes me sad because I was trying to do it the cheap way, and it ended up taking so much extra time. Um, when you can really just pay an office with the correct credentials $200 to write you a letter without ever having talked to you. And I think that's, it's, it's not awful that they'll just write you a letter. I think that's great. It's awful that it's $200. I think that's very silly. Um, so yeah, then once I had all my letters, uh, my doctor submitted them to my insurance. And that was a little, that was an adventure of its own because apparently insurance companies don't always approve non-binary people. So my doctors were smart and they, uh, changed my pronouns to he, him for, just for the letters. Um... And even, you know, trans men don't always, one, don't always use he, him, and two, don't always get instantly approved. Like, 
actually a lot of times you don't get instantly approved by your insurance. You just have to keep resubmitting. Um, but I was, I was lucky enough to get approved on my first try. Um, that made me happy. <laughs> I just realized this has gone from like a whispering ramble to like a soft spoken ramble to like a slightly louder than usual soft spoken <laughs> ramble. So. You can probably guess it's a post-it note. <laughs> I just love how it sounds. Well, it's a, it's like a mini post-it note. and that made me really happy. Um, basically for it, for them to cover a good amount of my cost of top surgery. Top surgery is normally, normally runs like $7,000 to $8,000 and it's going to reduce my cost to about $1,500. $1, so I'll, t I'll take that. Um, So, yeah, before leading up leading up to my surgery, I definitely joined a lot of like Facebook groups for top surgery where you could learn about top surgery and see results and there's even a non-binary friendly top surgery group on Facebook. So, stuff like that is was so helpful to me and just like yeah, and I've, I guess I've also talked to a few people um, about a few trans people who have gotten top surgery about the results. Oh, and, and like listening to people talk about their top surgeries on YouTube has been really helpful too. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of places I've gotten my information and just kind of been learning. Um, but yeah, my, my experience is that insurance companies are definitely not, not, not fully ready for non-binary people to start getting top surgery. Uh, it's annoying, but it is what it is. Um, so my doctor's office that I was going to, my surgeon's office, I should say, uh, got shut down for COVID, which I feel complicated about. I, obviously I, I'm okay. I'm still alive right now, but there are a lot of trans people who will literally die because they don't have access to the medicine that they need or the surgeries that they need. And so for surgeons' offices that specialize, especially those that specialize in surgery for transgender folks, uh, to be essentially forced to shut down, um, I'll spare you the long medical es explanation, but, but yeah, forced to shut down during COVID, um, and a lot of things that are considered non-essential, that's like the official medical insurance term, things that are considered non-essential were forced to shut down, and for, for, it just breaks my heart for so many of my fellow trans people um, 
I'm sure that people died because of that. And yeah, people die because of COVID too. So it's like, it's complicated. But then my surgeon's office reopened and I, you know, COVID has been going on, is still going on. So for my first consultation with my surgeon, we had a consult over telemedicine. And I essentially just had to take pictures of my torso um, from different angles and send the photos to my surgeon. And we, we, she looked at the photos, we talked about what kind of surgery I wanted. And originally, I wanted to have um, no nipples at the end, because you can do that. That's an option. A lot of people get top surgery, and they get a flat chest, but they also get no nipples. And there are, there are just so many options when it comes to top surgery. But my surgeon doesn't really do no nipples. She kind of just does the, like, the masculinizing of the chest. And my surgeon is really inclusive. She's really smart, obviously, but I was a little disappointed about some of her comments. Like, just some of her thought patterns seemed really binary. And I'm sure that's fine for binary trans folks, but for me as a non-binary person, I was kind of just like not impressed, <laughs> not very impressed. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I'm fine with having nipples, so it's like not really a big deal, but definitely, um... That's something to research if you're going to get top surgery. Like, before you get your heart set on a surgeon, don't show up at your consult only to find out they are not willing to do no nipples or something like that. Um, and you can find out about surgeons from your doctor, from, from Facebook groups, from other trans people. Um, there's a lot of ways. But... But yeah, it's just another, another moment where it's like, the world is, uh, the world of top surgery is not ready for non-binary people yet again. But yet here I am. And like I said, it, it really is okay. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm not heartbroken, you know, I'm just gonna have a, uh, uh, quote unquote masculinized chest, flat chest with quote masculinized unquote nipples and it'll be fine and no one will take a second look at my chest except for my scars and but yeah I had this whole idea where I like wanted to do tattoos in place of my nipples and I thought that would be cool but honestly honestly this is fine it's like what really matters to me is that my chest is flat for for my dysphoria and for my gender euphoria. But yeah, I wanted to tell you that because maybe that's important to you to know. Um, so yeah, we, oh yeah, another thing I talked about with my surgeon, we talked about um, dog ears, which is a term you'll hear a lot, uh, like, basically, there's some tissue kind of under your armpit that some surgeons don't consider to be breast tissue, and they won't remove it, um, but my surgeon was really adamant, like, that she doesn't leave dog ears, which I really appreciate, um, but at the same time, they'll only go so far back, like, you know, obviously they're not going to start removing your back fat, which I'm fine with. I'm, I'm fat and I love my fat self. So, not a big deal. 
but yeah, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff that I've had to consider and that, um, you may have to consider if you're consider if, you know, if you, if you ever get top surgery, if you're someone who is at least starting to think about that, like I'm, I'm, I just finished setting up a fundraiser. I just finished setting up a meal train. Um, you have to make sure there are people to take care of you for the first 24 hours. And sometimes beyond that, like for me, um, I checked with my doctor about how long my recovery would be, you know, no, knowing everything that she does about me. And my recovery might be longer than other people's. So, uh, so yeah, I, and actually my, my general practitioner, um, it was like when we've had our first, our first like, uh, consultation, I guess this was years ago. Um, but she was like, basically like, do you have someone who can care for you? And at the time I said no, and she's like, well, I can't, I won't write you a letter unless you have someone to care for you. And I was like, oh, I guess I have to have that lined up, like, very early on. So, so yeah, you have to, you know, talk with someone um, before you go to get your letters written, like, that someone will be there to care for you in the days when you come home and you've got to think about stuff like you're not going to be able to reach very high above you for a long time. Um, especially if you don't want your scars to stretch, like you've got to think about that. You've got to think about buying silicon scar tape. You've got to think about buying scar oil, doing scar massages for the months and months after your surgery. Um, you <laughs> like stuff like emptying your cat's litter box that's gonna be hard on your scars you can't do it you've got to find someone else to do it for you for you know however long it takes and yeah you've like anything that involves reaching a certain way that stretches your scars you've also got the people who care for you will have to help you with your drains most likely um, or the person who cares for you, and drains are a whole thing that involves blood, so I won't really get into that too much, but you can, can look it up. Um, if you just search top surgery drains on YouTube, there's many medical videos. Um, but, but yeah, it's just like so much stuff you have to think of, and then um, other stuff I'm thinking about is I've got to set it up where a good friend of mine has a medical power of attorney because I, you just got to plan for the worst case scenario. Yeah, I really don't plan on dying during top surgery, but you just never know. So yeah, I'm going to set up power of attorney. I'm going to set up a living will. Um, I'm going to get stuff squared away financially that I've been putting off for a long time. I'm going to make sure I have beneficiaries and, you know, all this stuff. So there, there is quite a lot to think about, but this is all, this is all stuff I've learned essentially from the internet. Um, and yeah, <laughs> it's, it's definitely learnable. It's doable. I, I kind of, it feels kind of surreal that I'm in, that I'm doing this right now, that I'm at this stage that I'm like less than a month away from my surgery. It's like, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, did that car ruin the moment or what? <laughs> Sometimes that happens. The engine revving at three in the morning just ruins a perfect, perfect moment. A perfect moment between me, you, and the mini post-it notes. Oh, 
Well, I hope you were, you enjoyed this part one of the Top Surgery Diaries. Yes, that does mean I am going to do a part two at some point, probably talking about the surgery and the recovery and, you know, all that good stuff. The juiciest part, some would say. So... See you later.